Hi, my name is Agata. Welcome in Agata's Cottage. It's Friday Souls time. Hashtag Friday Souls was started by Jen from Today in Jen Sewing Room. Under this hashtag, you will watch a lot of videos every week with vloggers sharing their makes, their plans, sometimes the fabric haul and a bit about their life. And sometimes their crazy pets. I have here Rainbow poking my legs <laughs> and demanding that she would be shown. So that's Rainbow. She will say goodbye for now. I need to evacuate her because she hates my tripods. And basically she tried to knock down my phone and when I'm editing, I actually get dizzy just watching footage. So I don't want anyone to suffer through that. So say bye, Rainbow. Rainbow is gone and I can focus on my Friday sales. It will be quick one because I'm a little bit sore. I had dental emergency yesterday and my jaw is still a little bit swollen and a bit sore. So I will limit my smiling today. So, Richie, if you're watching, I'm really sorry I won't be smiling that much because actually it hurts. And I would like to do a shout out for two sewing channels today. One of those channels I've been watching for a very long time. It's Liz the Baker that sews. She is fabulous sewist. She makes amazing things not only for herself but also for her kids. And her husband and she is just such a wonderful warm and positive person uh, it's just she just warms my heart every time I watch her her fabric choices are unbelievable and like sometimes uh, I consider myself being very adventurous in relation to colors and stuff like that um, but she puts me to shame so uh, I adore her and I watch all the videos she posts. So if you haven't subscribed to Liz yet, go check her channel and help her reach 7,000 subscribers. The second channel I would like to mention is new channel. It's someone whom uh, I even personally encourage to start YouTube. It's Chris from uh, Unsocial. I follow Chris on Instagram for a very long time. She is fantastic like the things she make they are unbelievable and she is just so vibrant and uh, happy and energetic person and um, she has only one video on her channel but she has a good few shorts so you can go watch uh, them there i'm sure she will be back soon with fabulous content so subscribe to her channel so you will not miss out on the things she will put in because i'm sure they will be fantastic. I have a few makes to share with you today. Uh, I made four things this year. <laughs> Sounds funny, but you know, it's the 6th of December today. So um, I will start with the latest one. So the latest one was Cocoon Cardigan by uh, Thoughtful Creativity. It's self-drafted. Uh, actually, you don't even need to draft it. You just use your fabric and go with with the fabric you will cut the pattern directly from the fabric it's basically a um, cozy big cardigan and i made it for my dear friend josie and um, i made her one two years ago and she loved it so much so when i saw how much she loved it i bought another fabric that was similar to the one that i used before so I got this gorgeous faux angora from Beyond the Pink Door and it was in my stash for a while. And I've been planning to make it last year and then you know, a few months ago and I just said no, I'm just going to do it now. I'm in the mood for sewing something for Josie so I just need to get it out of my system. So it took me maybe an hour and a half to do it, it maybe a little bit longer. Um, Faux Angora is very, furry is not the good word, it's like, like it's gorgeous fabric, don't get me wrong, it's gorgeous fabric, but it has those little loose threads that are, or whatever the four thing is that are coming out, and because of my dermatitis, my fingers crack a lot, so they've been getting caught 
uh, in those cracks. So I had to do all the hems, spin all the hems in gloves, like a cotton gloves, cosmetic gloves, whatever you call them, uh, because otherwise I wouldn't be able to do it. But that was the longest thing about this cardigan. It's basically a rectangle that you fold in a certain way, you sew the uh, side seams, you sew the hems, you add the cuffs and you are done. And it's fantastic. It's like a warm hug that you wear, basically. So I highly recommend you give this tutorial a try and whip something out for yourself or a loved one. And if you haven't tried for Angora yet, I highly recommend you do it. I don't think that Andrea has any left in her stock, but if I will, I will check her shop and if she does, I will leave a link uh, down below. But you can use any sweater uh, knits and you will get this lovely uh, drape. Actually, what's in the newest uh, Think Pink box would be fantastic as this cocoon cardigan. That's a thought. What else I made? I made three items for a uh, little girl in, here um, in my neighborhood and I'm gonna make one more out of the same fabric and then something additional but it will be done over next day or two. So I will start with the things that I have hiding inside. So I made her a zipper pouch. She loves Matilda the character from the book. So I lined it fully and I did it as a flat uh, zipper pouch so it's easier for her to hold it on the book or something like that. And I wanted to show you something. Um, it's actually with uh, to do with uh, using up what you have. I know uh, this little girl loves turquoise and I didn't have enough of any turquoise bias tape in my stash to use for binding the seams. So I combined basically a few different bias tapes uh, just to have a turquoise bias tape inside. Because you know, details matter uh, sometimes. <laughs> but I thought that it would be a nice gesture and uh, it's it's cute. It's uh, the inside, so the lining is quilted. I didn't want to quilt the uh, top of the zipper pouch uh, because it's small enough. I just uh, quilted the lining inside. Then I made her a cover for a notebook. So it's um, slightly too big for the notebook that I picked for her. Uh, but I thought it would be suitable if she would want to have a bigger one and the cover is stable enough on its own uh, so it would be okay for that. So it's Matilda fabric as well and I included one of the uh, tags from um, Specky Seamstress that I got recently. It's You Are a Superstar and the inside, just let me take it out. And the inside is lovely flannel that I had in my stash since, uh, I think since before Alice was born, so 11 years. The last make I made is this reading pillow. It's self-drafted. I added handle so it's easier to carry around. It's an envelope closing at the back, so it's easier to change it, that there's no zipper or anything in case it needs to be washed in high temperatures. I washed it uh, cotton before at 60 uh, degrees, so it should be fine. And I'm including a book for the little girl. The pocket on the inside is navy. I just wanted to use uh, some stuff from my stash and uh, stretch. That's the best way. Stretch the amount of the fabric I had to make as many things as possible for her. So I promised her I will also make her a bunny. And I'm planning to use pattern by um, Melly Sauce to make her a little bunny over next day or two. So that all things that I made this week. Now, fabric purchases. 
I know I did say I'm gonna use fabrics from my stash, but I did also say I'm not gonna stop buying fabrics. And I have few things here. Um, Ecobee had the sale over Christmas and I just had to uh, you buy some stuff uh, during the sale. So I got two fabrics for Project Dress Girl. One is this uh, stripy cotton poplin. I got it to get more uh, bias binding made because I actually like the way it looks. Uh, it's not too wide, but it goes with a lot of fabrics that I have in my stash. And the other one is this. It's actually stretch cotton satin. I know it's supposed to be 100% cotton, but I think it will be suitable. The stretch is minimal. Uh, so, uh, and I will treat it as the woven. So I will use the normal woven uh, patterns uh, on it. And it's just fantastic. I think it will look very lovely as one of the uh, small dresses. So I can't wait to make it. Uh, I actually got one meter of each of those fabrics. As I mentioned, they were on the sale, on very good sale, so I just couldn't resist. I also got some French terry for Alice for joggers. So I got her <sighs> jersey in the same ombre color way before Christmas, and I thought it would be suitable to get her French terry for joggers, so she has a set. So I got just a meter and uh, I will be making her jog joggers over the next few days because she is growing like a weed and she is lacking trousers in her wardrobe. And the next thing I got is cotton canvas for bags. So that's the cotton canvas. It's just the black one um, and I have only a little bit left in my stash so I needed more. The last fabric I got is this cotton twill. So um, I'm planning to make myself a denim style dress and I needed something to do a twill version because I want to use, um, I'm not embroidered, but like a, I have a denim in my stash that has flowers on it and I can't get that fabric um, anymore because sold out for years now so i i'm afraid <laughs> i'm afraid of using it as a you know first version so i thought that i will give it a try in fabric that i potentially might get more of so i got this cotton twill and it's lovely it has um it's not as stiff as the solid ones um it has lovely drape it's not too drapey but it is very nice fabric. I also got three fabrics in IKEA. They aren't exactly fabrics, they are actually blankets, but they are on a sale. We went to IKEA yesterday looking for a mattress, and of course, it was out of stock, but it doesn't matter. They had this gorgeous white uh, fluffy blanket. It looks like uh, made on the like knitted. So, um it was 5 euro and it's 130 centimeters by 170 centimeters. And what I'm planning to make is to make myself an oversized vest type of thing um, with a cowl neck. Um, Alisa from Total Creativity made recently one and I just love it. So I'm planning to use this one uh, for this make. I didn't have anything in my stash that would be uh, that I wouldn't feel that like I have a, a fair bit of sweater knits, but they are either small quantities or they are extremely lightweight or I have large enough quantities to make, for example, cardigan or I'm afraid to use them because if I won't like the make, then, you know, this fabric will be ruined. So I decided to, to just go with this one and have a look how it goes. And I also got two blankets made of, I think it's double gauze, like it looks like double gauze. Chris loves using um, Tetra 
like it's double ghost nappies like the old fashioned you know the rectangle nappies they're like tea towels for cleaning windows in the car and we had fair bit from times when Alice was little but you know with time they were getting more rugged and more rugged and we were throwing them out and I did try to find the same fabric that was used for those tea towels or the same tea towels so I did find that there were some in Aldi or in Little like they had some prints on etc but basically they were disintegrating after a few washes and they weren't suitable so uh, I thought okay just in case I will just order some double goss and so with it but then we were in Ikea and they had this it's 150 centimeters by two meters it was for nine euro and I thought I can just cut it up and sew it up and it will be perfect for the tea towels and we'll see if it won't hold last it will only cost if it won't hold long it will ask, only cost me nine euro and it won't feel and i won't feel as bad uh, especially that the double gauzes i seen they were 20 something euro so you know it's with the quantity here it's uh, for euro 50 for a meter so i should get a good few of the tea towels made out of it and when chris saw this he was like you know what when i was a teenager i had this big triangle scarf that you wore in early spring and then during super hot days uh, to protect yourself from sun and it was made from fabric like that i, I think i know what type of a uh, scarf he means but I remember them being squares and then they're just being folded into triangles doesn't matter I will figure out what he wants so he picked himself a gray color for the scarf like that we'll see he wanted different color but they didn't have uh, any they only had those two colors on the sale so um, yeah we will see how how I get on <laughs> with this one um, it might be a challenge so wish me luck because you know now I need to make it and soon enough because he asked could I make it for his birthday and it's in few weeks time one more thing about fabrics so um, a few weeks ago my dear friends Benita and Amanda um, and I were chatting about uh, going in person to the fabric store and we thought that it would be brilliant uh, location wise if we all could go to uh, Carlo Fabrics uh, we are very excited I haven't been in Katrin's store in person so we are very excited we invited uh, Rachel from the French team to join us so if you are in Ireland and would like to join us we are planning to go to Carlo Fabrics on 27th of January weather permitting because if there will be frost I'm not driving that's it. I, I don't drive when it's frost so we will go uh, early enough to be there do some shopping and then go for lunch uh, somewhere locally uh, so if you'd like to join us uh, please contact me here or you can contact me on uh, Instagram and uh, we would love you to join us so quickly sewing plans for next week very minimal uh, bunny for the little girl I mentioned plus hat and scarf for Alice and maybe t-shirts for Chris if I will have enough time life wise there isn't major anything happening it's just the normal day to day things my birthday is coming in less than two weeks so if you would be kind enough to press that subscribe button I would appreciate because I'm very very close to 900 subscribers and i think that would be fabulous birthday gift um what else don't forget to check liz and chris and their channels will be linked down below and tell me what are your sewing plans for next year actually you don't have to be anything major for next year like what's the next thing you would like to make uh let me know in the comments below happy sewing
and clean your sewing machine and change your needle. Bye!